Hello, everybody. So you have all spoken in my latest poll and you decided that you wanted to see a video on Art Nouveau. So here we are. I'm going to get right into it. I want to thank everybody so much for the subscriptions and for the love and for the comments and the continued support. Thank you all so much. You know that I'm extremely grateful. I don't have long today because you know I'm always in a hurry because I've got to get to work. But I had a couple minutes. What I wanted to do is first um, show the vase that was in the poll that I did on my community tab. And I'm going to do those um, in the near future again when I want to know what you want to hear about on occasion uh, specifically. So here is the Art Nouveau vase. And this was made right at the turn of the last century, right around 19, right around 1905 to 1910. It could be as early as 1900. Um, now we can attribute this to several different makers. We'll get into that in future videos. All I want to show in this video is the design aesthetics and the materials that were used in the Art Nouveau time period. And to talk about Art Nouveau and its timing, and basically when it was at its purest form. But look at this beautiful vase with this applied enamel in this poppy design. Classic Art Nouveau, very natural, very beautiful. And the size of this, normally we see these much, much smaller. We see these around the eight inch of size. This one's just gigantic and in such wonderful condition and decorated almost 360 degrees. And again, look at the surface of that, how the enamel is above the surface of the glass and that's all fired in place. And the detail is just fantastic on that. I love the color. I love the size. Again, that was in the um, photograph of the pole. Now, on to today's specific. Since I didn't have a lot of time last night, I worked 13 hours <laughs> and I worked two auctions and I came home and I rounded up some books and I just wanted to go over a couple of them. So um, this one was on Art Nouveau in general. It's by um, Style Icons and let's see here, uh, the author is um, Toad Tiri or Toad Tri, T-O-D-T-R-I, T O D. T-R-I on that one. And it's Art Nouveau. And this is just a general design book on Art Nouveau furniture, interiors, homes, um, very classic Art Nouveau in design and aesthetics and materials. So if you want a general book on Art Nouveau, this is a wonderful, wonderful book because it shows you bronzes and statues and jewelry interiors. So it's a wonderful kind of catch-all book on Art Nouveau and the style of. It's a very easy read. I highly recommend that one. The other one that I'm going to recommend, and I couldn't find the edition that I love the most. I think the first or second edition is the one that I really love. Uh, Christy Romero. I met Christy years and years and years ago. She's a, a, an amazing woman. You could do a ton of research on her as a jewelry historian. Uh, Warman's Jewelry, and this is the Identification and Price Guide. This is the fifth edition. The, um, the only edition I didn't much love, I think, was maybe the fourth um, or maybe the sixth, but the fifth edition is great. And there's a chapter on Art Nouveau, and it breaks down the movement, the time period. Again, we can kind of um, quabble or fight over or disagree about time periods, but I have always felt that Art Nouveau, its purest form, specifically in jewelry, was from around 1895 to 1915. Could you argue and say it was, you know, 1890 and, and then ended around 1918? Sure, that's okay. That's acceptable. And you have to remember there were time periods that were simultaneously and design aesthetics that were at the same time in Edwardian and arts and crafts. So it depends on the design of the piece, the materials used, and then also the origin of the piece because these time periods were all different in different parts of the world. We have to understand that. Um, and I'll get into more of that in future videos, but at least 1895 to around 1910, maybe 1915. In this book, it lists 1895 to 1910. I still give a little bit of grace and say it can go into 1915, especially in America, but it gives beautiful beautiful colors, color photographs, and the reason why I um, uh, bookmarked this one, this page, is right there. That brooch is by Kremens, and Kremens 
did produce Art Nouveau jewelry that was enameled and uh, very early. Because we, when we think of Kremens, we think of the gold filled from the 1930s, 1940s, and into the 1950s. But um, Kremens was producing gold and Art Nouveau at the turn of the century. Um, and I believe they were in Newark, New Jersey, I think. I, th I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll do some research on that. Um, and uh, there's gold, there's enamel, and then this is just wonderful layout and very user-friendly and gives you a ton of information on Art Nouveau and other time periods. So it covers everything. It's kind of a catch-all. The Art Nouveau jewelry book that I would most recommend is this one. And um, uh, Vivian Becker did this fantastic book, all-inclusive, very, very large, on Art Nouveau jewelry, and uh, there's the cover, and there is the publisher, and it is the most phenomenal book. Now, I marked just a couple pages, because again, I don't want to bore you in the beginning, but I saw a hair comb like this when I went to the Walters Gallery in Baltimore, and it's by Renee Lalique, and it's a fantastic hair ornament. In real life, you would think it's, you know, hair or ornament would be two to three inches across. This was literally almost seven or nine inches across. It was gigantic, and it was carved and looked exactly like a real orchid with the most beautiful pleacajur enameling and diamonds and gold. It was this gigantic almost not just a hair comb. It was like a hair ornament. It was this incredible thing and totally worth the trip to go to Baltimore to see it. Look at the enamel work and the whiplash lines and the design aesthetic of Art Nouveau using very natural gemstones, these natural pearls that were kind of uh, odd and, and um, natural and whiplash and curvilinear. Um, very naturalistic. And there are some of the enamel ones. Now these look slightly more transitional to me and go into the arts and crafts time period. But in this book, they were still considered Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau in style, especially this one over here. You know, could you say that that's Art Nouveau, Arts and Crafts, and Edwardian all together? Yeah, you most certainly can uh, because it's got platinum and diamonds of Edwardian design aesthetic. It's got the festoon chains like Art Nouveau, and it's got these kind of stylized foliate scrolls that are very arts and crafts, but then the opal mosaic also looks arts and crafts. We'll get into that, but this book on Art Nouveau jewelry, absolutely fantastic. Please get that one for your library if you love Art Nouveau jewelry, if you absolutely love it. There's other books on my desk. I have hundreds of Art Nouveau books. There's this one, and there's a magazine, and there's another amazing Art Nouveau book on furniture and design. Look how big it is. So we've got a ton more information to go on books eventually, but at least those books will get you a start on Art Nouveau when it was in the time period. Now, I'm going to go over to the light box, and I'm going to show you some incredible jewelry. And again, today, just so you understand, I'm not going to get into many of the designers. I might mention a couple, but I'm really going to talk about the design aesthetics the design motifs that they used, and of course, the materials that were widespread used across the globe when it came to Art Nouveau jewelry, specifically. So thank you so much for your votes on Art Nouveau. I will get into future videos on Art Nouveau glass, on Art Nouveau art pottery, porcelain, some textiles, and also um, some artwork, some uh, etchings and prints, and I think I already said that. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go over to Lightbox. I'm sorry I droned out a little bit too long. Mwah! I'll see you in a second. Thank you. All right, you all made it back to my light box with me. I don't know how I always managed to do this, but I try and consolidate down the beginning part of the video to like a couple minutes, and here we are eight minutes in. <laughs> anyways, these are uh, the Kremens brooches from inside that book uh, that I just showed you. And these are 14 karat gold, and they're by Kremens. And again, these are absolutely gorgeous examples of Art Nouveau. Look how naturalistic, look how realistic, look how graceful. The green enamel on the leaves, and then these bleeding hearts with these natural tiny little seed pearls that are all prong set on these little posts from underneath. They're just so carefully crafted and absolutely beautiful. The wire work underneath, I wish I could take these out. I just don't have the time. But the wire work underneath is incredible. And they are signed Kremens and uh, the early Kremens mark, not, you know, spelled out Kremens. I wish I could show that to you. We'll get into that in another video. But look at those. And, you know, I, I found these in two different places. And you can tell because the enameling is slightly different. But I thought, oh, I need both of them. <laughs> I have to have two of them. And these are worth now um, between eight and 
and 1200. They were between 1500 and 1800 just a few years ago, but they ha that market has, has gotten a little soft over time. But these are absolutely beautiful. And I believe I paid um, 120 and 200, yeah, uh, 320 for the pair. And I would say for the pair of them, around probably still around maybe 2800 uh, for the pair of them, but beautiful cremants brooches, and again in a velvet box. All right, on to our next one, and I don't really have a rhyme or reason to this, but I do have them all bagged up, so it'll take a second. This one is classic Art Nouveau, so you're looking at gold-filled metal and also brass on the inside. It's possible that the central medallion is enameled on silver that could be a silver disc but look at the orchid and the whiplash lines note the half pearl it's half pearled so they're cut in half note the half pearl border that's kind of a classic art nouveau design when they framed these curvilinear and whiplash florals but look how beautiful the enameling is the color of this, the sensitivity to Art Nouveau, slightly idealized, but so, so beautiful. And again, I can't thank you enough for being here with me and for looking at these wonderful examples of Art Nouveau. Then we'll go into a gold and diamond version. Note the whiplash lines, the curve, linear, flowing gorgeous hair, this front view grinning face of the most beautiful woman. Look how small this brooch is. Look at my thumbnail compared to this brooch. It's tiny. It's just at a full inch across, but look at the detail. That is what Art Nouveau is known for. And these then bezel set, beautiful, beautiful diamonds, very high quality. And note the flower up here. Another naturalistic element, telltale sign of Art Nouveau. Now, you might ask yourself, what is the purple color? Well, that is the gold that has oxidized. That's oxidation on the gold surface. That's not enamel. That's just oxidation. I could clean this, but I've always loved my pieces to look as old as they are. When you open this up, it's a watch pin. So a pocket watch went on this, and then a pocket watch would dangle from this as a brooch. So there must have been a beautiful and very expensive diamond set Art Nouveau pocket watch that went to this. I would have loved to have seen the pocket watch. As a watch pin and a brooch, I think I paid $175. And I would say to the right collector, that has a pocket watch that's Art Nouveau that needs this, it's between three and 400 and possibly 500. So there's a value on that. This one was made right at the turn of the century, 1900 to 1905. And look at the abstract heart shape. Look at how it looks like a heart. Uh, very naturalistic, the flowing hair, like I said, curvilinear, whiplash, very naturalistic. That is the telltale sign that you're looking at Art Nouveau. Now, another version, and I've yet to figure this out. We could never figure out if this was male or female. We, we weren't sure. Uh, it doesn't much matter because it's beautiful and handsome. Look at the border. Now, this one's not American. We're not exactly sure on the origin of this brooch, but what you're looking at is a Limoges painted, hand painted enamel plaque, very large and very unusual. Yes, there is some damage right there, but I never, never really cared about that because that was when this was set. When you see where the prong is, you can see that the tension of the prong chipped the enamel. And when there's no counter enamel, a glass on the back, then it is prone to chipping. And I've covered that in other videos. So just be aware of that. Enamel is very, very fragile. But when they set this, they did crack the enamel. So that was as made. But look at the whiplash border, this abstract floral, these beautiful whiplash lines. This is brass on the outside. And again, the, the enameling is just so incredible. And I'm, I'm not sure 
of the artist, but we do have a few ideas as to who this could be. I picked this up for a moderate rate. I picked it up for $25, and this was in 1997 or 1998, and I stashed it immediately because I thought, oh, I can't sell that. It's just too important, and it's such the beautiful Art Nouveau example. So value on that, I'm not really sure because I have to do some more research on artists. This is a very unique piece. This is a perfume bottle, and it's in sterling silver and this is mistletoe very naturalistic again curvilinear lines an overall design and look at the mistletoe on the top of this and it is a chantelaine perfume bottle and there is a little tiny stopper on the inside most of these tiny stoppers look how little most of these tiny stoppers are missing and i got very lucky that that little tiny stopper was still inside of this bottle it's just a, a very rare survivor when it comes to being complete. There all, are no hallmarks on this piece. I've looked at it for years and I can't find any. Attribution to Maker, we'll get into that in future videos. And this is also sterling silver. The solder seams are correct and I did test it. Um, I had it XRF. I didn't want to scratch it. Uh, and look at the patina. When people ask me why I don't clean my silver, let this be a testament to why I don't clean my silver. Some people say, oh, I, I don't like your silver because it's so tarnished. Well, that's your personal preference, and I respect that. But my collection, I wanted it to look its age, and that that shadowing that is inside of this really pushes that mistletoe design out towards the viewer. Imagine that just being flat silver. Heaven forbid someone have e stripped this off. It would look flat and boring and not rich, lush, and old. So that's why. And look at the detail that they did these little divots in the, in the mistletoe leaves. It's just incredible. And the overall design, I could talk about that forever. That one's 1900 to 1910. Um, and absolutely extraordinary. Now, um, this is slightly unusual, and I bring this out because I tried to bring out some of my no more notable Art Nouveau pieces. I literally have probably hundreds more, uh, and that's no exaggeration because I've collected Nouveau for a long time. Let me uh, zoom out. So this is an Art Nouveau belt. Uh, not many of these were made, and, and most certainly not many of these still exist today. Was it shortened over time? Possibly. Was there an extension at the back of, uh, when it was originally made? Possibly. I used to wear this as a necklace. I, I loved wearing it as a necklace. Now, it is silver plate, and the stones are not citrine like you would imagine. They are actually glass, and you could tell that the facets are not very crisp. They're very molded. There's a chip on there, and you can see inside of that chip. That's, a, that's glass. That's not a stone. And then look at the design. Whiplash, curvilinear, beautiful, beautiful execution, this kind of cross chain with a bezel set stone in the center, this kind of almost buckle design that these two articulating uh, foliate scrolls are on, but just really beautiful. And then at the back, this un unhinges. And you could see the wear. You could see the brass from behind being silver plate. So just look for wear on metal. But that was... I had to bring this out, and I do have um, two more Art Nouveau belts. I do have a Sterling Silver William Current Company belt, and I will be bringing that out in the next Art Nouveau video. I'd like to do at least three or four at least three or four videos on Art Nouveau, just because of how diverse and how wide the holdings are. Look at this snake brooch. This is just incredible. It's by William Kerr and Company. That top mark right there is his banded axe. It's an axe facing left, sterling, and then the 366 is the model number. Again, die formed. So this is pressed by a die. This wasn't hand chased and hand repassade. This was actually pushed out by a positive and a negative die. And then look at the depth though. Beautiful, beautiful design, beautiful scroll, beautiful naturalistic. Again, classic Art Nouveau. Classic Art Nouveau materials, classic Art Nouveau design, and you can tell that this is not original. It's upside down. That's not an original thing soldered on later for a clasp. And then this had a buckle. So this had a bar that was 
uh, soldered across it, and then it would have had another mate. So it would have been two snakes facing each other. But as a brooch, I still loved it. As William Kerr brooch converted, if it wasn't converted, it was just a brooch, it would be around $375. Converted, it's about $300, maybe $275. So it does take it down a little bit, which I find to be odd because the end result is so beautiful. But I wouldn't sell it. I just love it. <laughs> it's one of, uh, one of the ones I love. Uh, and then in the same... Uh, design aesthetic with snakes and naturalistic, I bring out this, and, and I've never really been able to find another one of these. This is sterling silver with gold wash. These are rhinestones and the green rhinestone eye. It's a coiled snake. And what's great about this is it's a hair ornament. So this is a barrette that goes in the hair. So this unclasps and then you put this in your hair, and then you clasp it closed. It is signed here, right there. And I, I used to remember this maker, and I'll get into this in the next video, but this is uh, an American company, uh, from my memory, and I'll do some research on that, and I'll bring this back, and we'll talk about makers in the next video. But I wanted you to see design aesthetics and materials used. So there we go. And again, I really appreciate you sticking with me because I've got so much more to share. There's three enamels, and I'll put them out at the same time. There's this one, and then there is this one, <laughs> and then there is this one. And what we have here is Art Nouveau across the world in these three. Now, again, we're not going to really delve into... Let me zoom in because we're so far away. Thank you so much for um, bearing with that, too. We're going to scoot these together, and we'll go like that. So this one up here, I believe, again, from memory, this one's English, this is American, and I think this is French. So I will do, again, further research in that. They're all signed by the different makers. Look at the design of this with these naturalistic pearls and these green enamel leaves, the clasp, the way it's constructed absolutely beautiful hallmarks all over the place on this one and the original tu tube hinge that i've talked about before and just that simple c clasp right there classic art nouveau the enamel is in great condition that one on the open market today because of the maker that's around 700 dollars. and look how little it's a tiny little thing but uh it might even be 900 dollars now this is the american version and absolutely absolutely beautiful. You can tell that these have been resoldered, so that is not old, and that is not original, and that is not original. Signed Sterling, and this is just incredible. And I got this from a family that lived in Pennsylvania, and the original part of the family was coastal, Look at the enameling, this opalescent white, the lime green electric leaves, classic Art Nouveau. Now it starts to lean arts and crafts, slightly stylized, but still whiplash, still movement, still beautiful. So this one might be more transitional than we initially think. So that is right around 1910, 1915, and still so beautiful. But I loved that version. And then there's this version. What an incredible, incredible brooch. Look at her face. Look at the detail. These half pearls are in fact faux. They are not genuine. These are glass half pearls pearls. They're not genuine. I'll get into how to identify those in the future as well. But look at that simple clasp, totally original. Everything's original on the back. But look at her incredible, fantastic, wonderful color. And I just have always loved this color combination. And being front view, having, uh, having it look back at both the the wearer and the viewer. There's something about this face that was incredible. And again, so miniature. So there you go on three enamel Art Nouveau brooches and all right in the same time period, except this one being slightly newer than the rest. Boy, my box is dirty. <laughs> I'll have to get that cleaned up. So let me put these back. Oops. Let me put these back in their boxes before I ruin anything. I don't want to chip any of the enamel. And then, um, let's see, we'll talk about, oh, we'll talk about this next. We'll talk about this 
buckle that's been converted to a brooch, another William Kerr, but look how gigantic. So we went from very small and understated, now I have to zoom out again. <laughs> we went from small and understated to this monstrous, massive sterling silver poppy brooch. Look at the dimension that this die pressed brooch obtained. These are all die pressed. These elements one two three four five and six those are all pressed in a machine and then soldered to a flat sheet and then all these curvilinear pieces of silver were then soldered together this is the most classic example of undeniable art nouveau there's not a single person in the history of jewelry or the history of design that can look at this and not say that it's genuine Art Nouveau. It, it, it's everything that Nouveau was known for. Again, whiplash, curvilinear, naturalistic, poppy flowers, just absolutely beautiful and gigantic. I think it's almost five inches across. And there is the William Kerr and Company signature again. The banded axe. And then that 1843, someone might say to me, or someone who's not familiar with jewelry might say, oh, this was made in 1843. This is 1843. No, 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 no. That's the model number that William Kerr kept in a catalog of this brooch. This, this is not from 1843. Uh, this is from 1900, 1910. So be careful when you see numbers on things as well. That's a great reminder to slow down and do some ad additional research when you're not 100% sure. Now, oh, these are, I, I guess I can show these in their bags. These are the more classic die pressed. I have literally probably, oh, I don't know, 80 or 90 of them. But look at that. Look at her face and the profile. Sterling silver, um, when you see it marked sterling front, that means that the back is normally nickel, and then the star punch is, is, is normal on the back of these. And then look at the oxidation. There's a lot of reproductions of these that are cast solid. If it's cast solid, it's probably not an Art Nouveau original because they redid these in the 70s and 80s uh, because it was so popular and it was getting hard to find these. But if you just gently tap, if it sounds hollow, hear how hollow it sounds? You can see right through there that this back sheet is soldered to that. That's an Art Nouveau original. That's 1900, 1910. And look at her face. She's proud and she's beautiful. Um, but look at the garlands in her hair and then this whiplash border again. He keeps saying whiplash and curvilinear. That's what it was known for. And then there's other versions. I have this one. Look at her face. Talk about incredible. Talk about insanely beautiful and original everything on the back. So make sure you look at the findings. If the findings are new, the brooch is probably new. Now, some of these are a little bit rough. Like you'll see a little bit of denting on the face. That's because they're hollow formed. Like I said, there's no metal behind that. That's just a thin sheet of sterling that's been soldered down. And then look at the early pin mechanisms. Again, I'll take all these out in future videos, but I just kind of wanted to give you the rough estimate of what Nouveau was. I'll pop this out. We'll talk about a few necklaces, and then I'm going to be on my day. And I thank you again so much for sticking with me on this video. You know, you had asked, and I'm so glad to supply you with the information that you want. I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. You are helping me, and I am helping you. <laughs> it's a great relationship. Now, this one's by Unger Brothers. And again, I didn't want to get into too much information on the makers, but there's the Unger Brothers mark right there. It's a conjoined U and B for Unger, U-N-G-E-R, Brothers. So U and a B, sterling silver. And this is one of the most beautiful and slightly unusual for Unger. Now, in my collection, I probably have of Unger specifically, maybe three. 30 or 35 and I can bring all of them look at the dimension of this the sterling so carefully folded then refolded then engraved with these beautiful lines to create this flower and look at the center of it that it's so raised up this looks like you took a natural flower and dipped it in silver it just looks so natural and so beautiful. And look at the slight little curve there, right at the tail end. Look at how they finished that. Just extraordinary gem. And again, if I polish that, or if I strip that in a dip solution, that would be the, the meanest thing I could have ever done to this brooch. Because look at the dimension. Look at the detail that pops out. It just 
it's it's incredible to leave the surface alone sometimes. And um, when I say sometimes, it's all the time in my collection. So uh, enough about that. This is a Medusa ring. I have yet to see another. I'm going to set her down and take a drink of coffee because I need it. My mouth is drying out over here. Look at the detail. Mm. Such the incredible, incredible detail on that. Wonderful front view in great condition, die formed again. So, you know, it's, it's hollow and you can see the hole. So you can see that this is soldered together. Look at that carefully. If this was solid silver, I would think it was a reproduction. Look at the snakes on the top for the Medusa headdress. Absolutely beautiful. And I wore her a lot. I used to wear her very frequently. She was very protective. In, in the best way possible. And be careful because these these will dent over time. So I always wore it very carefully. But again, whiplash, curvilinear, beautiful frame, wonderful oxidation. Now, I'm going to talk about a tray, just a, a, an, an Art Nouveau pin tray. And um, the reason why I bring this in is because it's an Art Nouveau uh, tray. So this would contain Art Nouveau jewelry at the turn of the century. This was made right around 1900 to 1912. That's the span I can give you on this. Look at the naturalistic mermaid. So she's on this Again, odd, odd shaped, soft corners, very curvilinear, very soft, very feminine, very naturalistic. And then look at her. She's just so pensive. I'm thinking about swimming away. And there's lily pads. There's um, a, a lily flower underwater. You can see that part of her is underwater, part of her is above the water, and she's just kind of peering over the edge of this tray. But imagine the turn of the century, putting your turn of the century Art Nouveau jewelry on this tray. Wouldn't that be incredible? It would just be, you know, we're going to do it. We're actually going to do this. So this... <clears throat> is a suffragette necklace. And I've been questioned on suffragette jewelry and, and I could do, <laughs> I could do three videos on suffragette jewelry. Uh, this is a, a beautiful example. Uh, and it'd been recently mentioned. And this is a, a classic example of turn of the century suffragette. And so, um, it, it's, it's, you, there's no denying that it's suffragette. And there's a long story about this, about how I acquired it and where I bought it. But I, I'll, I'll get into that in a separate video. So this is Art Nouveau, very curvilinear, very beautiful, very delicate, festoon chains, open back, bezel set stones, uh, s um, gold, Toned silver, sterling silver, beautiful, beautiful craft, all original, absolutely beautiful clasp on the back, beautiful original chain. And um, so you might say, why is it suffragette? Why, why would it be about giving women votes? So green, give, and then white women, and then violet votes. So it was a secret uh, message from the wearer, and, and not really secret because people caught on very quickly, but um, it showed that this woman was strong and, and fought for women to be able to have the right to vote. And uh, so green, give, and then white women, and then violet votes. So give women votes. And um, just incredible piece of history. But look at how beautiful. I mean, I've seen some of these that aren't quite so beautiful in a way, but I had to pick uh, one of the most beautiful. <laughs> I had to. I had to have like the best example. But like, look, so doesn't that look at home on this tray? Doesn't, doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that tell the tale of the Art Nouveau time period? Um, I think that it does. Uh, and it, it's um, a remarkable thing that I'm able to put these things back together to be able to share them for a visual catalog rather than, again, just looking online. Um, I, I don't learn that way. And um, yeah, um, let's go into these few necklaces and we're going to call it. Um, nope, we're not going to do that one. <laughs> I just decided to save one for a big surprise. This one's slightly transitional. So this is where I could get into it with other collectors uh, and then people can kind of D agree to disagree. Uh, and like I said before, there, there's no fighting in jewelry. And I don't know why so many people want to correct everybody else. It's like, just enjoy this. It, it's supposed to be joyful. It's supposed to be, I don't know, it's just supposed to be beautiful. Um, and, and look at this. So this is slightly transitional. So the original chain, this is um, gold filled. And then the pendant, it's both um, low carat gold and 
14 karat gold? Yeah, 10 and 14 karat gold. And um, the stones are synthetic pink sapphire. And then these are natural pearls. But look at how it articulates. So this is slightly transitional. It can go in between Art Nouveau, and it most certainly can lean Edwardian. Um, I, I don't really want to say it's one or the other, but to me, it's both. It's curvilinear, but it's still directional. The way the stones are set and the chain all says, I made right around 1908 to 1912. That's the close that I'm the closest I'm going to get it. Um, and you know, for someone else to be like, I'm the expert and you're wrong. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, because no one's ever truly wrong. We all have our opinions and this is just beautiful. So I didn't bring this on to stir it up, <laughs> stir up the dust, but I brought this on to show you a beautiful example of a turn of the century lavalier. It's incredible. And I have many of those in my collection. Now, we'll go back to the safety net <laughs> of purest Art Nouveau, two necklaces, and then we're going to call it. So um, thank you again for sticking with me. And um, again, there's going to be at least three, four, or even five more videos on Art Nouveau out of my collection. So look at this. This, again, classic Art Nouveau. Can it be viewed as slightly arts and crafts? Yes, it can. But the open work and the airiness of this, the colors and the use of this jelly opal, I wish um, the box wasn't so bright because this opal is really beautiful. It's got green. I wish I could block out the light. It's got like, oh, there we go. It's got like a greenish flash and this pink, bright pink. It's really washed out in here, but it's an amazing opal. Bezel set, and look at the oxidation again. So it's got the original chain, which I don't want to, well, I guess I could sneak it out of the box, but it's got the original chain. And then this is all plique azure enamel. So the leaves are all transparent enamel. So they're like a little leaded window. Be careful on this because extremely fragile. And there is some internal cra cracks in this. And we do expect to see that. When you have missing enamel out of these cells, it does become problematic and very difficult to fix. I have restored plique azure enamel before, but it's very, very difficult and very expensive and very time consuming. So there is that. And there is a tiny little chip on the blue berry there. Now, an interesting story about this. I bought it at a flea market and it was down, oh boy, about an hour and 45 minutes from my house. At <laughs> I never thought I'd find this and I paid very little. Today, it would probably be worth, oh, uh, this is going to be tough, 1800 um, on a really good day, you could get it for fifteen hundred, but uh, eighteen hundred to maybe twenty two hundred. Some dealers would have it out at more um, at some of the national bigger shows because that's really hard to find, very very difficult to find. But uh, classic again of that time period and uh, lovely, and I love it. Sterling silver, absolutely beautiful. You should see that opal right now. Now that I took it out of the light box, I I'll bring that back. Um, I, I I will remember to bring that back either in a short or something when there's better lighting, and then. We'll end on this. So this is, um, I didn't show much gold, but I didn't get into safety deposits, so I didn't have a lot of it. But this is a Festoon necklace. This is turn of the century. This is Art Nouveau. Um, natural blister pearl drops and genuine amethyst and then a single bezel set diamond. Look at the whiplash lines on the central pendant and the attention to detail, the fineness of the chain, that kind of Festoon, very feminine, very, very feminine very graceful, very beautiful. This woman was wealthy. She had quite a lot of money. Um, or, her, you know, her husband or her lover who provided her with this necklace um, really gave her a lavish gift. Uh, 14 karat gold. And look at the construction. I love to be able to flip things over for you. Whoops. So you can see the way that they're crafted and the way that they're put together. I think that that's the most fair thing that I can do or, or the advantage that I have on my channel is to show you the construction of these things. So pay attention to um, not only the design aesthetics of Art Nouveau, and I hope this gave you at least the first little glimpse into why I loved Art Nouveau and why I've collected it for um, 30 years. I actually um, found one of my earliest pieces, and uh, it was from 30 years ago. It had a little note with it, handwritten, uh, and yeah, I, I can't believe it's been a 30-year span already. It's just incredible. Um, so there you go for Art Nouveau. Thank you again so much for joining me. I hope you have a beautiful day. 
Thank you again. You know how I end this. I absolutely love you. I absolutely love you. And I will see you very soon with more videos. And then also, please look forward to more complex Art Nouveau videos. And again, thank you so much. Enjoy your day. I love you.